Thank you so much for staying tuned. It's still talking about, or we are rather still talking about strengthening Nigerians' democracy, the call for national conversation. You heard my first set of guests. Yes, both of them legal practitioners. They give their opinions and, of course, their views. With me here in the studio is a political analyst, a youth activist. He is in the forefront of the struggle. Yes, human rights activist. I don't know if it's a right full human rights activist or he tends towards the left <laughs> Imam yeah. welcome to tmi's on this edition all right you heard both of them they spoke at length telling yeah. us what is dividing us as a country they mentioned two factors religion and ethnicity and according to them that's what the political class is using to manipulate nigerian citizens well like of the opinion that if this can really really be checked we won't have much problem or will i say much issue because i like what al haji said he said if you must be tribalistic then you have to maybe you want to travel you have to tell them to bring a plane for you manufactured in your state if you are so so much into ethnicity tell them to give you a car if you want to drive a car that is manufactured by your ethnic group yeah, because if that is not possible, why are we still wallowing in religions and ethnic difficulties in Nigeria that continually divides us as a country? Emmanuel, over to you. Yes, uh, we say, uh, firstly, I want to say good morning to you. Mm. And, uh, the truth about it here is this. Uh, Nigeria as a people have gotten the platform and the institution for dialogue at any given time. We're in a democracy. And only to the fact that in every four years, we come to elect leaders that represent us at the lower cadre of the Houses of Assembly, at the local level, at uh, the uh, uh, local government authorities, and also at the national level, at the uh, National Assembly, as the case may be. And even at the National Assembly, you still have two chambers. You still have the lower chamber, the green chamber, and also you have the red chambers, which is the Senate. Now, what has happened over time is that when I see people talking about dialogue, you know, even before the 2014 confab, I also came out to say, see, these things don't work. Go and look at what has happened, even from recommendations from panels and all that, from Okuta panels, and, you know, all these things don't work. We now have a legislative arm of government that the primary purpose is to represent the interest of the people. Now, when you begin to duplicate functions, either conscious or unconsciously, it amounts to failure. Look at it. You have people representing you at the local government level. In every local government, you have people representing you at the ward. How many times have they held dialogue with people in the villages where they represent? How many times have they held dialogue with people mm -hmm. in the local governments, in, sorry, in the, in the state houses of assembly where they represent? To the extent these days, people no longer see the state house of assembly as their own. It is now seen as an arm of government that is being operated and managed by the superior powers in government. Mm -hmm. The truth be said, if we as a people must allow democracy to flourish, nobody will come out to talk about dialogue, conversation. What are you conversating? You are talking about the fact that Fulani headsmen are killing people. You want to dialogue it? Now, now if you say Fulani headsmen, you are generalizing. We have some bad eggs amongst them. When you talk about Fulani headsmen, it's, it's, it's the normal phrase to describe them today. Mm. Bandits, Fulani headsmen. Mm. I'm not the one saying it. It's mm. even on the media. Oh, but, but still, you can correct that by saying okay. some of them. Very well, have genuine very well. Ones. Very well. Yes. Uh, uh, as your case may be. Mm. Now you look at it. The other day in Oyo State, I saw Sunday uh, Oboho trying mm. to you know, uh, uh, galvanize his people to see how they can resist this sort of uh, uh, attacks on their, on, their, on, their, on their land. And you saw how people were reading different meanings to read. The truth about it is that power lies with the people. Speech. And when the people do not engage the processes, do not forget, federal government of Nigeria in 2014 spent billions of naira for people to just sit down in a conducive environment to dialogue. What have those dialogue heated results for? I could remember when, before we went, when we, uh, Michael Zakome was leaving Edo State for, 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 for the National Confab, some of us made recommendations that if you look at the federal corridors mm -hmm. in, in Edo State, there is no way you drive for more than five kilometers without seeing trailers parking indiscriminately. We have to look into that so that you have free flow of traffic amongst our federal roads. 
as beautiful as that presentation is, he went to the National Confab. In fact, the moment that was mentioned, other people in other states and other geopolitical zones came out to say, this is the fact that we are also facing. Our roads are being abused. Outside overload, outside uh, 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 wrong driving and reckless driving, we are still suffering the fact of indiscriminate parking. People can just park vehicle anywhere. Accidental vehicles are scattered everywhere on the road. How do we clear this menace? A recommendation was made till date. Nothing has been done. You still see FROSC coming out to say uh, uh, you must drive where you must. Those beautiful ideas that came out from the confab, nothing was implemented. Now people coming for, 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 for calling for conversation. We seem to be very honest with you. I come from the civil society background, so I must be very, 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 very open in my deposition here. Do you know that there are some people that will sit down every quarter in government, they look at how they will set up something that will be able to give them an uh, avenue to assess our, 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 our government votes. Mm -hmm. And they do this thing, they don't care what the ripple effect is all about. Now, you are saying people are talking about national confab, national confab, uh, national dialogue. What has happened to the parliament? The parliament, as we all know, even in the, in the, in the history books where we are taught about the Greeks, was a place where those people who ought to represent the interests of our people, haven't been elected, come to interface with their people. These days, if you are going to the National Assembly, when you get to the National Assembly, they will show you one lift for legislative members. Mm. They will say this lift is only meant for uh, legislators. They will show you the other two lifts, they say it's for the public. And I ask, with these legislators, we are reserving lift. Lift. It is only in Nigeria. You go to Dubai, you go to other African countries, you don't see where they, where they keep a specific lift for a group of individuals. That purpose of lift is to carry everybody up and carry them down with comfort. Mm. But when you get to the National Assembly, you see them put honorable members only. Discrimination has already started. So when you are not talking about tribes, when you are not talking about tribes, what do you what do you feel that an average Boma will say to an Edo man when it has to do with economic interest? They, will, they want to cut the limits even when people in government are out to stand as one. All right, you just hold on now. Themselves. You just hold on. I want to go for a quick break or return. We'll continue with this discussion talking about threatening Nigerians' democracy. A call for national conversation. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. TMI. Every opinion counts. It's all about strengthening Nigerians' unity, strengthening Nigerians' democracy, the call for national conversation. And one of my analysts said, look, what I call it conversation or conference, they are the same. They're just used interchangeably. And according to him, talking about Barista Emmanuel Obakbolo, he said it's an uh, uh, effort in futility. While Alhaji Alao Amin, a legal practitioner, also said, look, Yes, this time really calls for it. It gives so many instances where we have to come again. No matter what you, you talked about, the previous one, the outcome, that is time for us to sit down as a country and to really talk about it. And I have uh, Emmanuel Aibogun yes, here with me right now in the studio, uh, a political analyst and an activist. He's sharing his own views and opinion on this particular topic. Emmanuel, you are making a point, but I have to quote you all for a, a short break. You know, please commence with the point you are making. Yes, um, Wilson, if you, if you live in Nigeria, mm. if you live in Nigeria, you should know that institutions mm. are not fully engaged, particularly those people that are saddled with interfering and representing the interest of the people. Of what dialogue are we going to be dialoguing when after the dialogue it, it cannot be made a law? We live in a, a country that uh, operates a flexible constitution, written constitution as the case may be, that can be amended. Now, if you go into a dialogue and you discuss, and at the end of the day, that dialogue is not uh, implemented in the sense that it's not a law, because for you to implement anything, including budget expenditure, you must first make it a law. So the truth about it is, uh, are you going to allow, or the parliament is going to allow people to just gather, sit, and you know, recommend what uh, should be a law, and they just adopt it and pass it in the floor of the house? The answer is no. We have seen that work in 2015, in 2014. You know, we have seen that in several panels and uh, uh, conferences that have uh, had, and it never worked. 
So let me let me uh, uh, not join the <laughs> the the ghost chasers, the, you know that uh, white ghost chase, that uh, national conversation. We should be talking about how to engage the institution, particularly the parliamentarians. They I think that is part of national conversation. Yes, there are people that mm. collect as much as thirty-five million naira a month. You know, call it a uh, drop allowance, uh, salary, uh, office allowance, running cost to represent a particular constituency. Some of these constituencies are just two local governments, and you get as much as that amount of money to represent them. Uh, you know, in the hollow chambers in the national assembly, and in a space of four years, there's never a town hall meeting with these people. The, in fact, that still applies not only the national assembly members. Let us not use them as the secretary here. Yeah. Even up to the State House of Assembly, you never see them hold town hall meetings. You never see them engaging in town hall meetings. If you look at the American style of uh, democracy, that the federalist system that we that they operate, you will see that representatives at the House of Assemblies they go back to interact with their people. They hold community meetings. They hold town hall meetings. But in this part of the world where we have democracy, if you call some of your honorable members, they look at the phone number. If this one is not uh, having anything to offer them for the next election, they just ignore it. They don't care whether you are having an information that is of essence to them or whatever. That is the case. How many politicians today that are representative are, are running their constituency offices? How many do you go? Some constituency offices, when they give you the address, you go there 30 times in a month, it's under lock and key. But monies are being voted to pay a constituency office a, a representative, chief of staffs, and all that that are attached to that office. If these offices are being engaged, you don't need a, 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 any form of dialogue to also have your voice heard in government. You have honorable members that will represent the constituency for four years. They will not stand up one day in the hollow chamber to speak. The concentration that people are using to say that they want to dialogue, use that one to tell your representative to go and do your bidding. But according to persons they've been doing that, but it seems not to be working, hence the uh, call for uh, this dialogue. Uh, Why uh, is that uh, so? Uh, Mr. Wilson, I'm mm. a student of realism. Mm. Let me quickly tell you something. Me and you are seated here. You are a journalist by excellence. Mm. I respect your person and your practice. I want to ask this question. Since you have been a journalist reporting in a those state, have you ever uh, uh, reported any town hall meeting held by a politician in his constituency? Have you been invited as a journalist or your, your media station invited as a journalist uh, outfit to go and cover any, uh, uh, you know, town hall meeting with a federal lawmaker and his people in, in a local community? Where they sit down, you have the Odeon ways, you have the uh, niggas and chiefs and youths. Mm -hmm. As so to say, from various communities in a, an organized fora discussing about problems and also solutions to those problems. You see that, in, in fact, I, I took a pain some few weeks ago while I was in Abuja to ask for recurrent expenditures, uh, sorry, FAC allocations to those states mm -hmm. and IGRO from the, from the uh, uh, Bureau of, uh, uh, National Bureau of Statistics. And what I saw was shocking. What I saw, in fact, only God knows. The truth be said, the truth be said, not until when we begin to engage our, our representatives. If they want to campaign, if they want to ask for the opportunity to be given, uh, the, the chance to be given the opportunity to serve us at the National Assembly and at the State of Assembly, even the local government, they come kneeling down. They come lying down on the floor. They come to our royal majesties and the royal highnesses and chiefs and uh, John Wills and the uh, Okaigelis and uh, you know name them as the case may be. But the moment they win elections, they relegate those people and their you know interactions with them you know to a sort of uh, 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 you know intimidation if the case may be. Because the truth be said, you are calling for a national dialogue to discuss issues affecting you, and you send somebody to represent you on your interest at the National Assembly, to discuss your problems at the National Assembly. Uh, is that not the conflicting uh, 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 matter, as the case may be? So why we are talking about this national confab, if Nigerians are sincere mm -hmm. and they want to see, you know, an overturn in businesses of governance, they should immediately call their legislators. None of them will say that they don't have monies to come down. 
None of them will say that they are not enjoying from the SUVs. In fact, if you are being appointed, you know, or you are being elected as, as, as a, a legislator in this country, even up to councillor level, you are being given a drop allowance. Mm -hmm. You are being given furniture allowance. You are being given some stipends as transportation allowance. In the state of assembly, you are being offered an official vehicle. Mm -hmm. In the national assembly, it is no longer news. They spend billions of naira in buying exotic cars. It's like you are heaping the blame in the status of assembly uh, on the national assembly, talking about the parliament, but then to represent the people. Are you saying that they are not doing enough? We see. It's not that I'm saying that they are not mm. doing enough. They are not doing enough. It's not that I'm saying it. It is obvious to even the blind. They are not doing enough. Mm. I asked a simple question here. Have you seen where they go and hold town hall meetings? It's only when they want to share empowerment or Kekena Pep, uh, uh, name it. Very recently, I also realized that there's no legislator that come and go without investing in the educational sector. The of them will go and bring chairs. They will say they are renovating a classroom block. You know, it's not seen as an achievement. Mm -hmm. But if you have a constructive engagement with your people, all these things can easily be managed. Look at a few days ago, I was coming back home, rushing home because of to beat up the coffee time, mm -hmm. and I saw a fire on Aduawa. And I looked at Aduawa, I, I parked. I said, This is Guinness Nigerian PLC. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the road is Coca Cola. These people have firefighting equipment. And I don't think it will cost them anything for people that drink their products, for people that they manufacture their products also in their state, and they are having fire issues. Most of those people that were affected from this fire sell their commodity. What stopped them from taking their fire service equipment to rescue the fire situation at hand? Mm -hmm. It is because institutions that are meant to engage those people in that manner, in that light, are lackadaisical over it. It's not that it cannot work. It can work. Even from a layman reasoning, you know that it will work if the proper uh, uh, things have been done. Because mm -hmm. you cannot expect the fireman who is seated in the company you know, where there is a fire service equipment to just see that there is a fire somewhere and just roll out the equipment without following bureaucratic channels you know, in his office place. So mm -hmm. the truth be said, our leaders, our leaders are very, very weak we, in, you know, in representing what should ordinarily be, you know, not an issue, as the case may be, because you, you find that we have the thinking capacity. But when it comes to implementation, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to making things work, the 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 the, the, the order of the of, of, of the of the case is 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 thrown aside. Yeah, all right, now, are you saying that Mr. this Wilson, call will amount to nothing? Is that what you're saying? Mr. Right Mr. Now? This will amount to nothing. I'm only citing examples mm. so that people will know. Look at PIBB, PIB Petroleum uh, mm. Industry Petroleum B. Bill, yeah, they have had first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven reading. They have passed, repassed, you know, they are still passing. Up to now, nothing has been done about that. But thing. whose fault is it? Because whose communities they are fighting? The, um, is that the fault of the federal government? I'm, or? I'm coming to tell you yeah. the fault of who's, uh, who is to be blamed here. Mm. Firstly, the parliamentarians. They are, they are right that when a bill is being passed, passed first, second reading, and mm. the president refused to give his assent to it, they have a news within the law for the National Assembly to mm -hmm. make such bill a law. But over time, because everybody wants to be seen to be on the good books of Mr. President, it's mm -hmm. not only just with the pre President Mohamed Buhari led government during the time of Obasi Joy, it was the same thing. During the time of President uh, Yara Dua, it was the same thing. During the time of uh, President Gulo Jonathan, too, it was the same thing. So if you are not on the good books of the power, the ruling power, the, the uh, commanding uh, commander in chief of the armed forces, as the case may be, there are some things that will not skate through. Whether you are coming from a, a heaven itself, in as much as they are not supporting it, it will not skate through. And mm. those things are the reason why our democracy, you know, is going back day in, day out. All right, Emmanuel, you've spoken at length. Uh, you seem to say this is like, you know, a call in futurity, but some people may disagree with you. What do you think should be the right approach as we summarize our discussion? Um, um, we seen. Mm. The truth about it here is this. Um, anybody wanting to dialogue over issues affecting them is never a wrong thing. Mm. But making it a national discourse where government begin to vote money for the process is very wrong. Rather mm. than voting more money to do the same thing again and again, 
why don't they begin to engage the institution that is lawfully, lawfully in charge of representing the interests of the people mm -hmm. at various constituencies? The truth about it that when it comes to demography, I give it to the Nigerian government. They mm -hmm. know how to manage us in a demographic setting. But the report that comes out from that demographic setting, they find it very difficult to live up with it. All that right. is my take. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Emmanuel Aibogu, for your contribution on today's edition of This Morning on ITV. Thank you. Wilson. Well, let's just see how this will pan out. Will this succeed? Will there be a national conversation? Some are saying it's a national conference, but they call it this time conversation, a call by which is a conference to rescue Nigerian democracy. Would it be adhered to? And if it's adhered to, what do you think should be the discussion? Yes, in the conversation. This is going to end these uh, unwarranted kidnapping, killing, clashes here and there. Is it going to save Nigeria? What about the accident of removing that segment of local government of origin from any document you want to fill as a Nigerian? What about the religion and, of course, ethnicity disparity that has put us where we are? Mm. You have to do your best. I have to do my best to make Nigeria move forward. I really want to appreciate uh, Kadri for uh, uh, that topic from the Abuja studio when he talked about uh, the ease of doing business and all that. Emmanuel, thank you so much for coming on today's show. Thank you. I appreciate your coming. Thank you. Thank you. From all of us in the studio, we're saying have a wonderful Sunday. Bye for now.